you know that row reduction changes the matrix. However, sometimes properties are preserved during row reduction. You can think, for example, about the dependence relations between the columns. But what happens with the determinant of a matrix if we apply row operations? At first sight, you may expect that the determinant changes a lot, because the numbers in the matrix change a lot. However, as you will learn in this video, it's not so bad actually. Yes, the determinant of a matrix does change if you apply row operations, but in a very regular way. Let us see how. We will use a few tomato matrices to see this. We have a matrix A, B1, B2 and B3. And as you see, you can get B1 up to B3 out of A by just applying one row operation. Let's see how the determinants change. Start with matrix A. Then oh, determinant equals A times D times minus B times C. Then we compute the determinant of B1 equals C times B minus A times D. Then we can take a minus sign out and we get minus A times C minus B times C equals minus the determinant of A. So determinant of B1 equals minus the determinant of A. But how did we get uh, B1 out of A? Well, as you see, we uh, changed the two rows of A and then we got B1. So what did we do? We started with A, we interchanged two rows, then we got B. That means that we get the determinant of B by taking minus one times the determinant of A. Be careful with the order over here. Here, it will usually go will be fine, but in one of the other ones, the order in which you perform this is important. So you start with A, interchange rows, you get B. Then you get the determinant of B by multiplying the determinant of A by minus one. Okay. Next one. What did we do to get B2 out of A? Well, okay, you can see it. We multiplied the first row with K. What about the determinants? Determinant of B2 equals K times A times D minus K times B times C. So KAD minus KBC. We can take out the K and we get K times AD minus BC equals K times the determinant of A. Now, here we need to be careful, because if you want to make mistakes with this kind of stuff, it's here you can where you can make the mistakes. You start with A, you multiply one row with K, then you get B, then you get the determinant of B by multiplying the determinant of A by K. So, minus the order. Sometimes students accidentally put the K on the other side and then it's not true. So you start with A, you get B. You get the determinant of B by multiplying the determinant of A by K. So careful over here. Well, those two are the two, say, easy row operations. And already there something is happening. Interchanging rows costs you a sign, multiplying a row costs you a constant times the determinant. So what about the most used operation, which we have in B? B3 over here, where we added a multiple of a row to another one. To be precise, we added k times the first row to the second row. So the matrix B3 seems to be completely different. Well, let's compute the determinant. Equals, it equals a times d plus k times b minus b times c plus k times a. I just work out the brackets. AD plus AKB minus BC plus KAB. And then we see those two are cancelling out. And we just have AD minus BC. So it's equal to the determinant of A. So what has happened? Well, nothing. Well, that's nice. Our most used operation does not alter the determinant. So we start with A. We add one row of A, a multiple of one of the rows of A to another row, and we get B. Then the determinant of B is just the determinant of A. Okay, over here we have seen examples of two by two matrices. 
in order to prove this more general one. And do that, you need elementary matrices. That's, uh, uh, that's fine, but we will not go further into that. We will just be happy to use all the results here, because now you know what row reduction, how row reduction changes the uh, determinants of a matrix.